but uh, I'm thankful for Exodus chapter number 12. We'll begin reading in verse number 3. <clears throat> the Lord speaking to Moses says this, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with the legs and with the pertinence thereof, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be, for, uh, be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for traveling mercies this morning, Lord. The roads are bad. But Lord, you're a good God, and we thank you for these that have assembled in the house of God. And God, we know many are watching via live stream, and I pray you'd bless them as if they were here. Now, Father, for the next few minutes, I pray that, Lord, uh, you'd breathe on this place. I pray that you would edify and encourage your people. I pray you'd reward them abundantly for making their way out on such a nasty morning. And I certainly pray, as Brother Donald's already prayed, there be any amongst us today lost without the Lord, that today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, I pray revival would break out in our midst. I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. And I pray you'd glorify your namesake. I pray you'd have your will and way amongst us. Uh, and Father, I pray uh, that, Lord, you'd do a great work in our hearts. Uh, Father, we're asking you'd step out from behind the shadows uh, and manifest yourself in a powerful way. Uh, and Father, we'll not fail to bow these unworthy heads one more time uh, and thank you for your goodness. Uh, bless now, Father. Uh, we love you because you first loved us, for it's in the wonderful and holy name uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ that we ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, Amen. The book of Exodus uh, is a book that shows God's uh, delivering power. Uh, uh, can I say that? Uh, uh, I want you to notice a few things. Notice, first of all, uh, the persecution of God's people. Uh, in chapter 3 and verse number 7, the Bible says, uh, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt uh, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, uh, for I know uh, their sorrows. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, Israel had been in bondage to Egypt uh, uh, for some 400 years. Uh, now think about that, neighbor. Uh, uh, that's almost twice as long as America's even been a nation. Uh, they had been in bondage. Uh, most of them had lost all hope. Uh, uh, they thought there was no way uh, uh, that they would live any other life than being slaves to the Egyptians. Uh, uh, some of them had heard the stories uh, how God had blessed Abraham and how God uh, had blessed uh, 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 Isaac and Jacob uh, how God uh, 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 had done things in days gone by uh, uh, but now they've lost all hope uh, they think that God's against them uh, there is no way out uh, friend you may be in a situation uh, where you think there is no hope uh, I've got good news for you uh, as long as God is on the throne there is hope uh, and God hears your 
your prayer. Uh, God knows where you are. Uh, and God's doing a work whether you see it or not. Uh, we see that there's persecution. Uh, I want you to notice the plagues uh, 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 that God sent to Egypt. Uh, uh, if you look at verse number 12, uh, he said, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, uh, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. Uh, here it is, and against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. Uh, uh, can I say this? Uh, 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 if you've ever seen that great movie, The Ten Commandments, uh, uh, where Charles and Heston played, Moses, uh, you know that God sent plagues upon Egypt. Uh, and a lot of folks know that God sent plagues, uh, but they don't know why God sent the plagues upon Egypt. Uh, every plague that God sent uh, 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 was an attack against one of the gods of Egypt uh, uh, to show that Jehovah God was all powerful uh, and that the Egyptian gods uh, uh, were just gods of wood and stone and of their own making uh, and were powerless before Almighty God. Uh, I can I say that God used uh, uh, ten plagues. Uh, uh, and can I say that uh, each plague attacked a specific God of Egypt? Uh, uh, if you remember, God sent uh, 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 the plague uh, where he turned the river to blood uh, uh, for seven days and seven nights. Uh, that plague was against uh, 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 Hapi, the Nile River God. Uh, and God showed that their river God could not protect their waters. Uh, uh, but God was in control. Uh, uh, the next plague. Uh, uh, God sent frogs uh, into the land. Uh, uh, you find in Psalms 105 even the king's chambers uh, were filled with frogs. Uh, and that uh, plague was against Hect, uh, the frog goddess. Uh, uh, can I say that God sent two plagues. Uh, uh, one of lice and one of flies. Uh, and that was against Seed, the earth god, uh, which was the protector of things coming out of the ground. Uh, and God uh, uh, knew how to send those things. Hey, one pest Fly. Uh, I'll drive you crazy at dinner. Uh, can you imagine a whole pestilence of flies, a uh, whole pestilence of lice? Uh, they were all shaving their heads uh, and just showing uh, uh, that Sabe, uh, their girth god, uh, uh, could not protect them. Uh, uh, the next uh, 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 plague god sent sin against Hathor. Uh, that was the mother goddess of all Egypt. Uh, and uh, uh, it was a, 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 a human being with the head of a cow. Uh, and uh, you, any Egyptian movie, you'll see uh, 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 that uh, uh, Hathor. You'll see the mother goddess. Uh, and God uh, sent a plague on the cattle and destroyed the cattle of Egypt, uh, showing that their god of the cattle uh, could not protect them. Uh, God sent uh, a, 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 god, a, a plague against Imhotep, uh, which was the god of medicine. Uh, and God sent boils on man and beast, uh, showing their god of medicine uh, was not powerful at all. Uh, but God had all power. Uh, every plague broke them down uh, uh, and showed them uh, they were trusting in the wrong God. Uh, and when Israel was released, uh, hey, they feared the God of Israel. Uh, can I say the next uh, uh, plagues? God sent two plagues. Uh, he sent locusts uh, and hail fire from the sky. Uh, and that was against Nut, uh, their goddess of the sky. And you are a nut uh, if you believe in Nut, the goddess of the sky. Uh, hey, uh, then God sent darkness for three days and three nights. Uh, and that was against Horus, the sun god. Uh, and every Egyptian movie, uh, you'll find there's a sun somewhere uh, where they worshipped Horus the sun god. Uh, I've got something else for you. Every Catholic church uh, has a sun somewhere in it uh, where those pagans worship the sun god. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people go to the beach and worship the sun, uh, uh, but there are folks that are actually in places called churches uh, worshiping a pagan god today. Uh, uh, but God turned the lights off for three days and three nights, uh, showed them he's the god uh, not only uh, of you and I, but the God of the universe. Uh, he's in control of it all. Uh, and the last plague, uh, the plague in Exodus 12, the plague against the firstborn uh, was against Amnuri. Uh, he was the God of the firstborn. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, it shows God's delivering power. We see the persecution. We see the plagues. Uh, and then in verse 13, we see the Passover. The Bible says, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. 
Can I say this is when God instituted the Feast of the Passover and once a year the high priest would have to put up a lamb for 14 days and inspect the lamb, uh, make sure he's without spot, without blemish. Uh, they'd offer up that blood. Uh, and in Exodus chapter 12, uh, the blood was put over the doorpost of the lintel. Uh, and when the death angel came uh, uh, seeking the firstborn, uh, when he saw the blood, he passed over that place. Uh, and my friends, uh, uh, that is the start of a beautiful picture uh, uh, that it takes the blood uh, to redeem us from sin. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22 said in most, almost all things uh, are by the law purged with blood uh, and without the shedding of blood there is no remission. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, when you uh, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and accept Him as Lord and Savior, uh, His blood is applied to your life. Uh, it washes away your sin uh, and when God sees the blood, He don't see you as a sinner. Uh, he sees you as a child of God. Uh, 375 times uh, in your King James Bible you find the blood as a picture of redemption for sin. Uh, uh, can I say the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, it's preeminent in its value. Uh, it's permanent in its character. It will not wash away. Uh, it's personal in its achievement. Uh, he shed his blood for all, but you must partake of him personally uh, for it to be applied to you. Uh, and can I say his blood is perfect uh, without spot uh, in its presentation. Uh, when God sees the blood, he passes over us. Uh, now look back in this chapter, chapter number 12. Notice in verse number 3, we find a lamb. In verse number 4, we find the lamb. And in verse number 5, we find your lamb. Can I say there is a lamb uh, there is the Lamb. His name's Jesus. But it doesn't matter if He's not your Lamb. Hmm? Now I'm interested in verse number 4. The Bible says, And if the household be too little for the Lamb, let him, uh, let him and his neighbor next to, to his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the Lamb. It says, If the household be too little... For the lamb. In other words, is the lamb too much for the house? I want to preach with God's help on he's too much lamb. He's too much lamb for anything you'll ever need or ever face. Uh, can I say John chapter 1 verse 29 lets us know who the lamb is. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, uh, which taketh away the sins of the world. Revelation 5.12 says, uh, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb uh, that was slain uh, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Uh, uh, can I say Jesus Christ is the Lamb uh, and He's too much Lamb uh, for anything uh, that you'll ever come in contact with. Uh, can I say first of all, He's too much lamb for sin. Uh, I've heard people say, uh, I've sinned too much. God can't forgive me. Uh, I've gone too far. God can't redeem me. Uh, I've just got too much sin in my life. Uh, God would never look my way. Uh, God couldn't love me uh, because of my sin. Uh, uh, listen, uh, it's not about you and your sin. Uh, it's about the lamb being too much for your sin. Uh, uh, the Bible says in Romans 8, 3, for what the law could not do, uh, and that it was weakened through through the flesh, uh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, uh, and for sin, condemned sin uh, in the flesh. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For it made Him uh, to be sin for us who knew no sin, uh, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Uh, Ephesians 1, seven says, uh, In whom we have redemption through His blood, uh, the forgiveness of sins, uh, according to the riches of His grace. Uh, hey, sin might be too much for you, uh, but it's not too much for the Lamb. Uh, he's too much Lamb for your sin. Uh, he condemns sin. Uh, hey, He paid for sin, uh, and He can forgive sin. Uh, he's the only one that can, because He's the Lamb of God. Uh, he's too much Lamb for sin. And sin may be too much for you. A lot of people say, well, I'll get right with God when I quit, but you can't quit sinning. But I know one that can break the chains of your sin. Because his name is Jesus. 
He's not only too much lamb for sin. Can I say this? He's too much lamb for Satan. I heard a lot of people say the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. You're sorry no good flesh made you do it. Your desire to sin made you do it. But if your excuse is that Satan made you do it, i got good news for you. He's too much lamb for Satan. Hmm? Uh, can I say he was too much lamb for Satan in heaven in eternity past? In Isaiah 14, 12, the Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Uh, uh, listen, uh, long before there was ever man, uh, uh, there was uh, 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 something going on in heaven. Uh, and can I say, there was an anointed cherub named Lucifer, uh, and he uh, was the most cr uh, beautiful created angel there was. Uh, and he was the minister of music. Ezekiel gives us a, a description of him. He actually had an orchestra coming out of his being. Uh, and uh, he would lead the angelic choir. Uh, and he was above all other angels. Uh, uh, the problem was is he got to thinking too highly of himself. Uh, and he thought that he was even better than Christ. Uh, and he thought that he could overthrow Christ and kick Christ off the throne. Uh, and uh, because of the pride and the arrogance, uh, he was cast out of heaven uh, and thrown to this old earth. Uh, and he knows the lake of fire has his name written all over it. Uh, can I say, uh, in eternity past, uh, 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 in heaven when Lucifer thought he was bigger than the lamb he found out real quick uh, uh, that the lamb was too much for him uh, he was too much for him then he was too much for him in Bethlehem uh, in Matthew chapter 2 uh, uh, when through Herod the king Satan sought to uh, uh, kill the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as an infant uh, and uh, uh, Herod uh, through the age of uh, 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 the, the slaughter of innocence uh, he slaughtered every male child two years of age and younger uh, uh, listen uh, uh, the Lord appeared to Joseph and Mary in a dream told him to get down to Egypt uh, hey he was too much lamb uh, uh, for Satan back in Bethlehem uh, uh, could I say he was too much lamb for Satan in the wilderness in Matthew 4 uh, uh, when the devil revealed all the world had to offer uh, and ask him to cast uh, himself down and worship him ask him to turn the uh, stones under bread and ask him and ask him and tip him in the wilderness uh, and each time the lamb said it is written uh, and he defeated him with the word of God because uh, he was too much lamb uh, he was too much lamb for uh, Satan in the garden of Gethsemane my dear friends now listen we love singing about Calvary but the real battle for our soul happened in the garden. You know the story. Jesus took his inner circle, his three disciples, Peter, James, and John, told him to watch and pray with him. And he went a little farther in the garden and he prayed. And the Bible says he prayed as it were great, and his sweat turned into great drops of blood. Come back and his disciples are sleeping. Prayed again. Come back as disciples sleep. So you couldn't watch with me one hour? Shows how weak our flesh is. And can I say that in his prayer, he prayed, let this cup pass from me. Can I say a lot of commentaries was praying, uh, said he was praying that he wouldn't have to go to Calvary said he was looking in that cup and saw the sin that he would have to become and he was praying in his flesh he wouldn't have to go to Calvary a lot of preachers preach that can I say they're both wrong Amen. Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world can I say before he ever created man he knew he was going to the cross to pay for man's sin Amen. can I say he wasn't praying that the cross would pass from him. You see, if you study the life of Christ, many times while his disciples were praying or were sleeping, he'd be up in a mountain to pray. You'd find that he didn't have a pillow to place his head upon. You'd find there was one time in his flesh he was hungry and came by a fig tree and it didn't produce any fruit to feed him. You see, Jesus didn't treat this body like we treat it. He knew he'd only need it for a short while. He didn't feed it properly, didn't rest it properly because he came come to do the will of his Father that sent him. 
And can I say while he's there in the garden, he's praying, he's sweating as it were great drops of blood. He's hemorrhaging in the garden. When the bulls of Bashan from Psalms 22 come past him, I believe every imp from hell was discharged or dispatched to the garden. They're trying to kill him in the garden because Brother Peter, if he'd killed him in the garden, the Bible wouldn't have been true. And you and I had had no hope. And when the Lord was praying, let this pass cut from me, uh, cut pass from me, he wasn't praying they wouldn't have to go to the cross. He was praying for the strength to make it to the cross. He's praying that death would pass from him because he's about to die in the garden. Go and study it. The Lord sent angels to minister unto him to give him the strength to make it to the cross. Can I say, in the garden, he was too much lamb for Satan. Amen. The indictment against uh, Peter, James, and John, I've often said, if they would have truly been praying and watching with the Lord and been there, maybe the Lord would have used them to minister unto Jesus instead of angels. But he was too much lamb. For Satan in the garden. He was too much lamb for Satan on Golgotha. Oh, yeah. The devil tried to kill him on the cross. Couldn't kill him. Hmm? Why? Because he's the resurrection and the life. And you go study it out. Jesus said it is finished and he gave up the ghost. My dear friend, Satan couldn't kill him. He was too much lamb for mm, the devil on the cross. Can I say he was too much lamb for Satan while he's in the grave? Hmm? Huh? I've often brought this out. Jesus is in the grave. Wrapped up in a cloth, thrown in there, and got a napkin on his face. Three days and three nights. And hell's having a party. Huh? They think they killed him. They think it's over. Satan's got a tailor fitting him for a new robe because he's going to take over the throne. Huh? They're having themselves a time. I mean, they are singing ding dong, the witch is dead and everything. They're having a time. Uh, but that first Sunday morning, yeah. early before the sun came up, the sun got up. Yeah. And he made his way to the lower parts of the earth. And while hell's having a party, there's a knock at the door. Satan tells some imp, go get the door. Goes to the door and says, Who is it? The Lord says, It's me. He says, Who are you? He said, I am. The damp looks back at Satan and says, The door's for you. And you know what transpired? He walked in there and looked at Satan and said, Give me the keys. Yeah. You know what Satan did? He bowed down and he handed the keys to the Savior. Because Satan is utterly powerless before the Lamb. Mm, Greg Phillips has said it many a time the devil don't even have the keys to his own house huh? in Revelation 1 we find the lamb saying I have the keys to death and hell and I'm alive forevermore huh? hey was too much lamb for Satan in the grave huh? hey he's too much lamb for Satan during the millennial reign huh? when he'll bind him for a thousand years huh? hey it'd be too much lamb for Satan at the great white throne judgment huh? where he sends him to the lake of fire and has him cast there forever and ever uh, I'm saying neighbor he's too much lamb today too much lamb for sin too much lamb for Satan he was too much lamb for the sepulcher huh? Luke 24 5 the angel said to them women why seek ye the living among the dead Matthew 28, 6, he's not here for he's risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Uh, and again in Revelation uh, 1, 18, I'm he that liveth and was dead. Uh, behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. It's too much land for the sepulcher. He couldn't stay dead because he's always alive. He's life. Uh, he only stayed day, dead three days and three nights because the death watch was in over. Mm, they said at the fourth day, after the fourth day, it, 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 hey, that's a miracle. Uh, it's a miracle. Three days and three nights. By the way, while I'm there, I know Easter will be coming up soon, and we always have good Friday. Jesus didn't die on Friday. There's no way you can get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday. Amen. And a matter of fact, they didn't keep a 24-hour clock like we do. Uh, they did sun, sun up, sunset. That's how they kept their days. And can I say, uh, Jesus died on Wednesday. 
was in the grave Thursday, Friday, Saturday, got up first Sunday morning. There you go. That didn't cost you anything. So uh, that, you know, I already blasted Catholics once. Let's get them twice. What do you say? Huh? Huh? He was too much lamb for, for, for the sepulcher. Can I say this? He was too much lamb to be severed from. I love Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep before the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us uh, from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, listen, friends may walk out on you. Family members may walk out out on you. Uh, hey, your health may fail you, uh, but I've got good news for you, uh, friend. Uh, he's too much lamb to be severed from. Uh, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, hey, uh, in the darkest days, he'll be your sunshine. Uh, hey, when everybody else walks out, he's a walking in. Uh, what a blessing that he's too much lamb, that nothing can separate us from him. Uh, it don't take much to separate you from some people. But there's nothing you'll ever face that'll separate you from him. He's too much lamb. Can I say this? He's too much lamb for your sufferings. He's too much lamb for your disappointments. And you live long enough, you're going to get disappointed. He's too much lamb for your distress. You live any length of time, you're going to face some stress. Mm. Especially if you're driving the streets around here. Can't make a left turn anymore. Roundabouts everywhere. Traffic lights every 15 feet. I mean, it's terrible. Uh, I'm talking about it's too much land for your sufferings, your disappointments, your distress, your doubts. I'm not talking about doubt in your salvation, although the Satan will try to cause you to do that from time to time. I'm talking about the older you get and the closer you get to heaven. The more your body and the more your psyche gets to thinking about, I'm not what I used to be. And you begin to doubt some things. Uh -huh. It's not for a lack of want to. It's for a lack of having a desire to get up and do it. Huh? It's work. Now, I understand why so many people that was the generation before me had false teeth. It's too much work to brush or your own. It's a lot of work. Sometimes I just look at things and get tired. I'm going to say he's too much land for your doubts. He's too much land for your devastation. You live long enough, you're going to face some tragedy. You're going to have loved ones that pass away. You're going to face things you thought you'd never face. But you'll never face it alone, friend. He's too much land for disease. When God gave me this message... I had no problem writing from a cold to cancer. He'll hold you, help you, or heal you. You don't have to worry about it. Only to get cancer. I found out that he held me. And he helped me. And he healed me. Because hmm? uh, he's too much lamb. I don't know why some people don't, don't recover from their cancer. And others. I don't understand all that. All I know is that I didn't have it long enough to fret over it because he's too much lamb. Can I say this? Romans 8, 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Friend, he's too much lamb for your sufferings. And the sufferings of this present time won't even be a memory when we get to heaven. John Flavel, the great Puritan writer, wrote this. As God did not at first choose you because you were high, so he will not forsake you because you are low. Because he's too much lamb. He's just that much lamb that he's there for you all the time. Let me say this. He's too much lamb for the sanctuary. Solomon was praying and dedicating the temple. He said this in Second Chronicles 6.18. But will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house which I have built. You see, too many times 
we lose sight of why God left us here. God didn't give us this wonderful church family and this beautiful church building to just sit on this hill and say, Hallelujah, let's go to church. You see, this is the place we get charged up and fueled up to do what God called us to do. And that was to take the gospel to the world. Now, if you look in verse number 4, of chapter 12 it said if the household be too little for the lamb let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb he said if the if the lamb's too much for your house to eat go share it with your neighbor now I just gave you just five simple points on how he was too much lamb and where to share him with our neighbors that's why we got them packets out there that's why we go out in the summertime and pass out tracks on the door handles and let people know where our church is. We're wanting them to hear the gospel and know that Jesus can save their soul. See, if we keep him bottled up in the sanctuary, it doesn't benefit this community. How many other folks are out there looking for a good church? How many sinners are out there thinking there's no hope? They just need to hear about the lamb. See, he's too much lamb for the sanctuary. Where to share him, where to take him out and let others know what a great lamb he is. But can I say this? He's only too much lamb in your life if you submit to him. See, some just come to get help. He'll never be too much lamb for you then. In order for him to be too much lamb, you don't need to come get help, you need to come get in. You hmm? need to submit to him. Hmm? He's too much lamb if you're Seek him. Seek and you shall find. It's too much lamb if you're sharing. It's too much lamb if you shower him with praise and thanksgiving and adoration. I wonder, when was the last time you really praised him and worshipped him? When was the last time you shared him with somebody? When was the last time you came before him and sought him? And I'm not talking about his blessings or for him to answer your prayers. You sought him. When was the last time you just raised a white flag and submitted to him and said, Lord, not my will, thine be done? Hmm? You see, too many, they don't want to share him, they want to sell him. For a whole lot less than Judas did. There are some people, it don't take much for them to knock them out of this race. Don't take much for them to stay home. Don't take much for them to keep their mouth closed. They sell out. Can I say this? Too many shame him. Jesus is looking at all of our lives right now. Is he pleased with your life? Or is he ashamed of you? Can I say? Too many want to shelf him until they need him. Say they think they can put him in a box. Go put him on a shelf. Stay right there, Jesus. And then when the bottom falls out, you've got to run and get him. Where would I put him? Oh, here he is. I need you, Jesus. He don't work that way. You can't put him in a box. The heaven and the heavens of heavens can't contain him. Hmm? Can I say this? Too many want to shop him for something they feel is better. How many people have left a good Bible preaching church to go somewhere that made them feel better about themselves? Hmm? Can I say this? Too many want to shuffle him into their schedule. He'll never be too much lamb in your life if you're trying to find a place for him in your life. He needs to be your life. And then you shuffle everything else into your life. And can I say this? Too many people want to shun him altogether. Can I say he's always speaking? There's just not enough folks listening. The Bible says in the last days there'll be a famine for the hearing of the word of God hmm? you know why we don't hear him because he speaks with a still small voice and we've got too much noise in our life God help us friend I've found a hundred times over he's too much lamb but is, is he too much lamb for you I once worked with a man I knew his brother 
his brother was a great Christian man. And so when I met him and I knew they went to the same church, I, I assumed he'd have a similar testimony. And finally, after working with him for a few days, Brother Mike, he said, this, let me get one thing straight. He said, I, I'm not my brother. I, 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 don't, I don't need that much of the Lord in my life. I'm satisfied in knowing that I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. And when I get there, he doesn't have to give me anything. Just knowing I'm going, that's good enough. Well, that's not why Jesus saved us. He didn't save us just to go to heaven. He saved us to redeem us from our sin that we can point others to him. And that we could show others he's too much lamb in our life and anything in their life. I wonder today have you got to the place you don't think you need him that much you realize all he has to do is cut your oxygen off for about 30 seconds you'll realize how much you need him all he's got to do is cause your heart to quit beating for about 10 beats you'll figure out how much you need him huh? all he has to do is strike you with blindness for about a minute and a half you realize how much you need him. You see, everything in your life is controlled by him. How much control are you willing to give him? He's too much lamb. You willing to sell out and let him truly be the lamb of your life? If you're here today and you're not saved, aren't you tired of being a, a sinner? You can be saved from your sins. He done paid for them, and he's willing to pardon you. He just asks you to come and accept him as your lamb do you know him as your lamb he's too much lamb friend is he too much lamb for you let's all stand <clears throat> we don't have any musicians this morning but we don't need musicians what we need is the lamb you willing to come and ask him to do a work in your heart if you're not saved you willing to come and give him your life Folks are coming. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for being our lamb. For being far better to us than we ever deserve and being all that we need. Now, Lord, so many times we get so consumed with self, we think we're above what we really are. Help us to realize our need for the lamb this morning. God, do work in our hearts. Lord, send revival this day. Lord, I pray you'd break the gods of this world and through us show this world there is a true and living God and his name is Jesus. God, I pray you'd help us to be all that we can be because you've been everything we've ever needed. Now, Lord, bless. Bless in this time of invitation. Do a work in the hearts of your people, send revival. And then, God, we certainly do pray. If there's anybody unsaved, that today you wouldn't just be a lamb or the lamb, you'd become their lamb. Now, Lord, bless, and we'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.